I am live streaming on YouTube right now. Does God love sinners? He loves the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall have everlasting eternal life. I was trying to ask him if he believed on Jesus Christ, but uh, it he couldn't really understand what I was saying. So we're gonna get it figured out, though, ain't we? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, let me get a refill on some coffee, and then we're gonna get back into it. What is up, Joe Ann, 1970? Hey, y'all double tap the screen. We're going to talk about healing or we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. We're going to talk about something today. We've been getting after it this morning. I'll be right back. Blessed be the name. Oh, good morning. I need healing, brother. I'm sitting here with tears of joy. Heal me, please. Well, let's. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's talk about healing. We got them some. We got some on YouTube already. Let's see. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. Let's see. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So whatever you're hearing the most of is what you're going to be believing. If, you, Like we said, if you are hearing the doctor's report in your mind or in your spirit, if you are constantly hearing that or hearing the news day by day, day after day, that's all you listen to. That's what you're going to believe. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of of God. If you want faith in the Word of God, you need to hear the Word of God. If you want to have faith to be healed, you need to be healing, uh, hearing healing scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. <clears throat> if we if we could come to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and we preach, we preach a uh, a message to reach only sinners to to get them converted. Are we going to have faith to be healed or are we going to have faith to be converted to Christianity? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Whatever we're hearing is what we're going to have faith in. If we want a, a, a saved only message, that's what we're going to have faith in. Whatever we're hearing is what we're going to have faith in. If we come to church and we preach theology, we preach doctrines of men. If we can come to church and we do this Every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, how can we expect to have faith to be healed if we never hear healing? You know what I mean? If it's God's will to heal, we need to be hearing that it's God's will to heal. We need scripture backing up everything that proves that it is God's will to heal so that we can have faith to be healed. If we don't preach healing, how else will someone have faith to be healed if they never hear healing preached? Or how, or in other words, another way to look at that would be how would someone, or how would God manifest healing in our life? How would God manifest healing to us if it's never preached? Remember Titus chapter 1 verse 3? God manifest his word through preaching. God manifest his word through preaching. Everything that this word has to offer, he will manifest it to you through preaching. 
if we preach theology and doctrines of men three times a week, what is God going to manifest to us? Can he manifest healing to us if that's all we preach? Can he manifest salvation, pr uh, provision, prosperity, reconciliation? Can he, can he do all of that? Can he manifest it to us if we're not preaching it? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You're going to have faith to receive whatever you're hearing. God manifests his word through preaching. He will manifest whatever you're preaching. You know, even in Mark chapter 16, when he sent his, uh, when he sent them out, he said, go into all the world, preach the good news. He that believeth not is damned. He that, be he that believeth in the baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name, that have faith in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So they're going to preach the good news of God's kingdom and what his kingdom has to offer. And it says that as they preach this, all these manifestations are going to be taking place. Two verses later in Mark chapter 16, the last verse in Mark 16, it says that the Lord was received up into heaven, was seated at the right hand of God. And it says that he went with his disciples confirming every word that they preached with signs following. If they went forth preaching healing, Jesus was going to manifest healing everywhere that they went. If they went forth, forth and preached doctrines of men and theology, God was going to confirm doctrines of men and theology everywhere that they went. But if they went forth and preached healing, casting out devils, speaking with new tongues, God was going to manifest that. Whatever we're preaching, God's going to manifest it. And we wonder why we're not walking in revival today, why we're not walking in the power of God today, because the power of God's not being preached. When the power of God is being preached, he's going to manifest his power. I tell you what, ain't that right, Matthew? Glory be to God. I tell you what, let me go to second, uh, let me go to first Corinthians. We think we got to have some pretty voice to preach the good news. And I'm not even talking about being a pastor. I'm talking about speaking the word of God out of your mouth while you're at work, while you're uh, around people just engaging in your everyday life. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Let's see. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words. He said, but my speech and my preaching was with the demonstration of Holy Spirit and of power. God, Lord of mercy. God's power and demonstration of Holy Spirit was everywhere that Paul went because that's what he preached. He went and preached the good news of the kingdom of God, and therefore God manifested his kingdom everywhere that he went. He preached the power of God, and power the power of God was made manifest to them. How be it? Oh, I'm sorry. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but it was in the demonstration of Holy Spirit and of power, so that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but your faith would stand in the power of God. And that's what that's where the church has got to as a majority. The church has got to where their faith is in the wisdom of men. I'm telling you, I ain't gonna mention no names, but they they solely depend on man's wisdom to come and preach this message to them so that they can know everything that God has to offer them. The wisdom of man. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hey, someone just commented and said that the speaker sounds better on uh, YouTube from the MacBook right here. So if anybody wants to go to YouTube, they can watch it from there. They said the sound is better. All right. I'm telling do we want God to confirm theology? Do we want him to confirm doctrines of men? Or do we want God to confirm his power among us? What do we want? 
I want him to confirm his power among us. I want to walk in the manifestation of his power. I want to see people getting healed, delivered, and set free. And I can tell you, if I'm preaching theology and doctrines of men, I'm not going to see the power of God manifest everywhere that I go. I want to see people healed. I want to see people delivered. I want to see people getting out of wheelchairs, deaf ears popping and open, blind eyes opening up. I want to continue to see these things. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm going to preach. <clears throat> Romans 1.16. Listen to this. For I am not ashamed of the good news of Christ, for the good news of Christ, the gospel, the gospel that we preach, that we preach. Remember Titus chapter 1, verse 3, God manifests his word through preaching. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, unto deliverance, unto healing. It is the power of God. When, when his good news gospel is being proclaimed, I'm telling you, if you're one-on-one -on -one witnessing to someone while you're getting your hair cut, and they're back here cutting your hair. You're witnessing to them. The power of God is being manifested right there by every word that you speak concerning God and his kingdom. Man. Woo -hoo -hoo. Man. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek Mm. Christ said that we would go on to do greater works. Amen. John 14, 12. It says, For therein, for in this gospel that we preach, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. As you have believed, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. Good Lord and mercy. Man. What did Paul tell, tell the church? Paul told the church at Galatians, Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. Remember, we just set, went over this earlier. He said, how did I work miracles among you? Did I work miracles among you because you went to church every time the doors were open? Did I, because you kept the Sabbath, did, because you kept the law, was I able to work miracles among you? Was I able, able to, to for, was you able to have a harvest of miracles in your life because you've done certain things or was it by the hearing of faith? He says that he was able to work miracles among them by the hearing of faith. The church of Galatia was hearing hearing what Paul was preaching about miracles, signs, wonders, the death, burial, and resurrection, and how it reconciled them back to the Father so that they could have everything now in this life that the kingdom of God has to offer, and it produced a faith inside of them. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It produced a faith in them, which created an impartation so that they could impart, have everything imparted into them that the kingdom of heaven has to offer. And it worked miracles among them. Man, it sounds so much better on YouTube. Glory to God. If anybody wants to go to YouTube, go check it out. Link in the bio. Man, woo -hoo -hoo. I'm telling you. Proverbs 18 and 14. I don't remember this one. Let's see. 1814. The spirit of a man will sustain him in an infirmity, but a wounded spirit or a weak spirit who could bear. See, remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more that we hear these this faith preaching, the more that we hear healing, the more that we hear deliverance, it builds our spirit up so that we can receive from God. And it says it'll make us have a strong spirit and it will sustain us in an infirmity. In other words, it'll get us through that infirmity. It'll fight off an infirmity. It'll bring us out of the situation and circumstance that we're in right now if we have a strong spirit. We can't have a strong spirit for healing if we're not here in healing. 
We can't have a strong spirit for the power of God if we're not hearing about the power of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What's up, Felix? Glory to God. Joanne is the lady on here that was bound to a wheelchair for 23 months that we were talking about. She's not in that wheelchair no more. Faith begins where the will of God is known. When you know that it is God's will for you to be healed, you can have faith. You can't, you can't have faith unless you know it's God's will. You won't know God's will unless you hear God's will. You won't even go to God for healing if you don't know that it's God's will for you to be healed. That's why Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Ah, goodness and mercy. You won't go to God for healing if, you don't, if you're unsure that he's going to heal you. You won't even go to him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Does it say that he was a healer? Does it say that he was God that he, or does it say that he is now? For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He is healing right now. Come on, Tyler Jones, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. He, he is. It says that he is. It don't say that he was. What did, what did God tell Moses? He said, I am that I am. What's your name? Who, who am I going to tell you, tell all these Israelites or Hebrews that, that, that has sent me? What am I going to tell them your name is? He said, tell them my name is I am. Does he, did he say, tell them that my name was I am or that I am? I was or I am. He didn't say, go tell them I was. I was the God that healed thee. I was the God that delivered. No, he said, go tell him I am the God that heals. I am the God that delivers. I done it yesterday. I done it today and I'll do it tomorrow. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He don't change. If he don't change, that means somebody changed. Somebody must have changed because we're not seeing the same thing that, that they saw in the book of Acts. Who changed? Did our message change? Did our belief in God change? Do we think that signs, miracles, and wonders die with the last apostle? My gosh, can you imagine the, the line to that guy's house on, when he was on his deathbed? I imagine they was lined up three or four miles down the road trying to get into his house because they knew he was the last apostle and that miracles were about to be done away with. If miracles have been done away with, I can promise you faith ain't been done away with. You can receive anything from heaven by faith right now. I ain't never heard of a days of miracles anyway. I know a God of miracles. I'm telling you, we got to do away with this mentality that he was the Lord thy God that healed, that he was a deliverer. He is today. Faith Without faith, it's impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is. He is right now. <clears throat> And, you know, a lot of people, well, I believe in God. I believe. I believe in God. He, faith is not abstract as in a general sense of believing. You know, James talks about how the devil believes in God and he trembles. We all believe in God, but faith is specific. It specifically believes. Harold, let me know what you need a miracle for. Faith is specific. It ain't just going to have a general sense of believing that I'm believing that something's going to change or that God can do what he wants like, like Ezekiel. Got, remember, God told Ezekiel, he said, do you think I can make these dry bones live? Oh, God, you can do whatever you want to. You're, you're, the, God, you're the creator of heaven and earth. You can do whatever you want to. What, in other words, Ezekiel was saying, it don't matter what I think. You're going to do what you want to anyway. He said, if you want these dry bones to live, he said, you say, you speak to them. Thank you, Father. Amen. God is. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says that God's people, 
God's people. Are you a God's people? Are we a God's people? It says that God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have no revelation, because they have no knowledge that the Lord thy God that healeth thee is the same healer today as he was yesterday. The Lord God who heals. Because you have rejected knowledge, he says, I will reject thee. Faith begins where the will of God is known. You've got to know that it is God's will. You've got to be fully persuaded that it is God's will for you to be healed, delivered, and set free. It said that in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because they have rejected knowledge, I will reject them. And it goes on in chapter 11, verse 3. He says, he says, I brought Ephraim, a tribe. I brought this tribe, a bunch of Israelites, <clears throat> one of uh, Jacob or Israel's son, Jacob's son, Israel. Um, it's actually a grandson. Uh, what did I say? Ephraim, yeah. He says, I brought him out by his hand, and I showed him that I was the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I showed him in Exodus 15, 26. I showed him, I cut a covenant with him saying that I would always heal him. But he did not know that I was a healer. Therefore, he died in his sickness. So what? Ephraim had a covenant with God that they could always be healed, always be, de be delivered, always be set free. Yet they didn't know that God cut this covenant with them. Therefore, it says that they died. They rejected the knowledge. Hosea 4, 6, and Hosea 11, 3. Father, we call forth, we call forth every need right now for Harold in the name of Jesus. We say that seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Father, we thank you that the heavens are opening up over Harold's life right now. Provision is being made. Uh, needs are being met. We call it done, and we call it forth right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13 says that God's people again, they went into captivity because they had no knowledge. They went into captivity because they had no knowledge. Because they had no knowledge. They chose, they chose to walk into captivity and hand themselves over to the devil and, and his plan, his pursuits, his purposes, because they rejected the knowledge that God had given them. Have we rejected the knowledge that God has given us? He's given, I've got 1,600 and something pages right here of knowledge, of revelation, and I've got the Holy Spirit of God who authored this that's wanting to teach it to me, wanting to show it to me, and tell me that it is for me. But have I rejected the knowledge? If I have rejected the knowledge, it says that I have walked into captivity. Because I have no knowledge. Because I have no revelation. I don't want to reject it. I don't want to tiptoe around it either and act like I'm scared to preach it because I don't fully understand it. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. John chapter 6. Stream it to your TV. That's a good idea. John chapter 6. <clears throat> Y'all getting anything out of this? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Teach us, guide us, show us whatever we need, Father. Get it to us. We open ourselves up. John chapter 6. I'm going to start in verse 35. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never be thirsty. What you need prayer for, Mr. Jet? Anxiety. We, we cast down every anxious thought, everything that is trying to come against Mr. Jet right now in the name of Jesus, and we yield 
that mind over to Christ. And we say that he has the mind of Christ. He won't think on these things. And we call him healed. We break the power of Satan off of Mr. Jet right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We say be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Just take you a deep breath. Thank you, Lord. He that believeth on me shall never be thirsty. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father has given unto me comes to me. And all that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who has sent me. Jesus come from heaven to the earth to do the will of the Father. If you want to know God's will for your life, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Look at Jesus' life. He walked the face of this earth healing all that were oppressed. That's what Acts 10, 38 says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. That is God's will for your life, for you to be healed from all oppressions of the devil, that you would be delivered, that the, the enemy's hand can't even come near you, won't touch you, no side effects, nothing could come near you. Jesus came to show us the Father's will for our life. He come to show us his will for our life. Man, whoo! Oh, man, thank you, Jesus. Matthew 4.23. Matthew 4.23. Matthew 4.23. Jesus went about all of Galilee teaching in their synagogues. Was he teaching doctrines of men and theology? And preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. No, he was in there teaching and preaching, showing them the, that God's kingdom was now made manifest in this earth and it was available to them. It was available to them. Read Luke chapter 4 and you'll see what what this message that he preached was. It says that he came to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to recover of sight to the blind. That's what Luke chapter 4 says, that he come to heal all that were oppressed. He come to heal, to deliver, to set free. Jesus went about all of Galilee teaching in the synagogues. Why was he teaching and preaching in the synagogues things concerning the kingdom of God? God could manifest his kingdom in these synagogues if that's what Jesus was preaching. Titus chapter 1 verse 3, God manifest his word through preaching. He went with them confirming the word with signs following. If, if he would have been in there teaching doctrines of men and theology, what, what would God have made manifest to, to everybody in those synagogues? It wouldn't have been the power of God. He went teaching the good news concerning the kingdom of God. And therefore, that's what manifested in, in, the, in the synagogue. It says he went forth teaching and preaching things concerning the kingdom of God. And it says that he healed all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people by him preaching this good news that they don't have to be broke, they don't have to be sick, they don't have to be hungry. By preaching this good news, it created a faith in these people that were in the synagogues Romans 10, 17. You don't remember Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith created an impartation for them to receive what the kingdom of God had to offer or what was being preached. Thanks, Mike. And it says that they were healed. They were delivered. They were set free. God, Jesus didn't just go into all the hospitals and lay hands on every sick person and expect every one of them to be healed. He went in preaching and teaching. That's what he did. He was teaching and preaching so that he could get their faith to a place to where they could receive and create an impartation. That makes sense to y'all? Matthew 8, 1. It, I'm telling you, 
Matthew, it's a lot in Matthew right here. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus. Y'all believe it? Matthew chapter 8. <clears throat> when Jesus had come down from the mountain, says that a great multitude of people followed him. And behold, there came a leper that worshipped him and said, Lord, if it be your will, you can make me clean. Mm. Y'all hear that? Lord, if it is your will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy. You heard that? You need that neck pop? That developed pretty good. <laughs> and he said, I will. It is my will to cleanse you right now. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. <laughs> oh Roku. So this leper come and said, if it's your will, you can you can heal me. Jesus said, It is my will to heal you. It is my will to heal you. That's what he's saying to us today. It's my will to heal you. You don't have to ask if it's my will. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mr. Jet says he feels, feels it. Resist the devil and he will flee. I'm telling you, we throw, if we'll do like Jesus and we'll throw, it is written in his face every time that he comes up with accusations and every time that he tries to put temptation and put things on us. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is written, I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. Jesus has borne my sickness, carry my pain. I'm telling you, sucker punch that son of a gun right in the face with some scripture. Let's see. Matthew chapter 8, 5. All right. And Jesus, this is the same chapter, Matthew chapter 8, <clears throat> going on down to verse 5. And when Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Remember, he come to Jesus so that his servant would be healed. Jesus said in John chapter 6, if anybody will come to me, I'll never cast them out. I will never cast them out. I will come and heal him. The centurion said, <clears throat> Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority. I say to this man, go, and he goes. And I say to another, come, and he comes. And I say to another, do this, and he'll do it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said unto all them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith in all of Israel. He says this is the greatest faith that he has ever saw in all of Israel. He said that he didn't have to come under his roof. He said, all you've got to do is speak your word, and this servant shall be healed. Poo -hoo -hoo. Get you an uh, an uh, anoint you a prayer cloth too. <clears throat> Put that under your pillow. And he and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down on Abraham. Let's see. <clears throat> and Jesus said unto this centurion servant, Go your way, as you have believed, so it will be done unto you, according to your faith. In other words, be it unto you. I am new to your preaching, and I am feeling very unworthy. You are not. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that God has made you a new creation in Christ Jesus. Everything that was before right now has passed away. Everything. It says in verse 21 that God made Jesus to be our sin, who knew no sin, so that you could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are worthy. There was a price that had to be paid. He made the price. He said it, and he paid that price in full. If he bought you and paid for you, that means that you must have been worth something because he paid a price for you. Don't let the devil lie and tell you that you're not worthy or deserving of something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
And when Jesus had come into Peter's house, this is the next verse. He come into Peter's house. He saw Peter's wife's mother, Peter's mother-in-law, laid over with the fever, sick with the fever. And he touched her hand and the fever left and she arose and ministered with him. And that evening had come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out these spirits by his word, and he healed all that were sick. As many as would come to me, I'll never cast them out. You know, in his hometown, they wouldn't even come to him for healing because they didn't believe on him. He could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. If you're going to come to God, you're going to come to him in faith. I go live every other Thursday and every Wednesday evening. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, He has took our infirmities or our sickness and he our our weaknesses, and he has borne our sicknesses. He says, If you'll come to him, he'll never cast you out. Remember Hebrews eleven six, he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I sure will, Atlantis. Just let me know what we need to pray for. I'm just reading some Bible verses over here showing you Jesus walking the face of this earth healing people. <clears throat> Remember John 6 says that he came to do the will of the Father. He come to do the will of the Father. He come to perform the will of the Father. A lot of Christians think that God's going to put sickness on somebody. Why would God put something on somebody that he has already delivered us from? Galatians 3.13 says that God has redeemed us from the curse of the law. It says that Christ was made the curse for us so that we wouldn't have to be cursed. He was made sick so that we wouldn't have to be sick. Not in the sense that he was sick, but sickness was put on him. Why would God put something on us that he, he had delivered from us? Delivered us from. And you know, a kingdom, you know, when Jesus was casting out a devil, I believe this is, this is also in Luke chapter 11 or 12, maybe 13. <clears throat> Jesus was casting out a devil and they come up, these Pharisees were saying, this man cast out devils by the power of Beelzebub, by whom all chief devils you know, they were saying that he was casting out devils by the devil's power. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said, if I cast out de devils by the power of Beelzebub, but by whom do your sons cast them out? He says, every kingdom that is divided against itself shall be brought to desolation and every house that is divided cannot stand. So if God puts sickness on people and Jesus walked the face of this earth healing people by God's power, that would be a kingdom divided. Why would God put something on somebody and Jesus turn around and heal them? God ain't going to put sickness on anybody because that would be a kingdom divided. He would be working for and with the enemy right there. John 10 says the thief comes to steal. The thief comes to destroy. The thief comes to kill. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. Every kingdom that is divided against itself will fall. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for favor over Atlantis right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that every need shall be met according to the, your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you that they have the mind of Christ. We thank you for provision. We thank you that every need is met in Jesus' name. South Dakota, what's up, Cheryl Ann? Glory to God. <clears throat> you know, and a lot of people think that God's... Well, you know, we had some bad weather this past weekend. Well, God's in control. God's in control. We're just going to hope for the best. Would God send a destructive tornado to come and take people's life? Does he take life or does he give life? Does God take life or does God give life? John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus come to give us life and to give us life abundantly. Jesus, if God sends storms, why would Jesus rebuke storms like he did on, on the ocean, on the sea with his, with his disciples? If God sends storms and Jesus would have been rebuking the storm that God sent, he would have been divided against his father's kingdom and that kingdom can't stand. We got to know the source. 
whereby sickness comes. We got to know the source of every demonic oppression thing that could try to come against us. It ain't of God. It ain't of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus didn't go around and say, hey, did, did God make you sick? Or he didn't pray and ask God, were you the ones that made them sick? Or was it the devil that made them sick? He healed all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Let's see, where did we get to? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 9. And he entered into a ship, and he passed over and came to his own city. And behold, they brought unto him a man sick with palsy, lying in the bed. And Jesus seen their faith and said unto him, unto the sick palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. Y'all get this now. Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. He saw their faith. This man was trying to get healed. He saw their faith, but Jesus said, Son, your sins are forgiven. He didn't say be healed. He said your sins are forgiven. Do we know what ends up happening to this man who sit with palsy? Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew their thoughts and said, Wherefore think you of this evil in your heart? Is it easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to this man that was sick with palsy, Arise, take up your bed and walk. And he rose up and went home. So the same faith that it took for this man's sins to be forgiven, it was the same faith that healed him. The same faith. We don't have to have to have a different kind of faith for us to be saved and be healed. The same faith faith. The same substance that got us healed, that, that saved us is the same substance that'll heal us. Glory to God. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yes, Lord Jesus. Matthew 9, 18. I'm just going through a bunch of healing verses showing you what Jesus did when he walked the face of this earth. He went about healing and doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. He came down to do not his will, but the will of the one that sent him. God's will for your life is this right here. What did I say? 9.18 <clears throat> While he spoke these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler that came and worshipped him and said, My daughter is, is even dead, but come and lay your hand upon her, and she will live. He said, If you'll come to me, I'll in no wise cast you out. This man came and worshipped him and said, I need you to come lay your hand on my daughter. She's dead. Come lay your hand on her so that she'll be healed, so that she'll rise up from the dead. Come lay your hand upon her and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did the disciples. The disciples wanted to see this. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garments. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. She said within herself, She had a confession of faith. If, if you will look at this in the Greek, especially in Mark chapter 5, it breaks it down a little bit more. This It was in a sense of this woman walking down the road, saying within herself, Oh, if I can touch the hem of his garments, I know I'll be made whole. If I can touch the hem of his garments, I know I'll be made whole. She had scripture to back up everything that she was believing for. Because Malachi chapter 3 says that the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings or the hem of his garments shall have healing in them. Say so, what? She had, she had scripture to back up everything that she was believing for. 
Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. She was confessing the scripture over her situation, and she went and took what was hers. She come and took it. I know I'll be made whole, but Jesus turned about and said, Who touched me? Mark, that's what way Mark recorded. Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? And his disciples looked at him. There's 285 people here pressing up, grabbing you. What do you mean, who touched me? He said, I felt the healing power come out of me. I felt virtue leave me. And that woman, she had fell out in the presence of God. It says that she was trembling and shaking. He said, woman, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Or he actually said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. All these people thrown in Jesus, trying to get healed, just trying to receive something from God. Didn't know if it was his will or what. I mean, you know what I mean? She pressed in with faith and knew that it was God's will. If I can touch the hem of his garment, she, that's the only one that it records saying that got healed. She pressed in and took it. And the woman was made whole that same hour and Jesus came into this ruler's house and he saw the minstrels and the people making noise. In other words, the daughter was already dead. Remember the passage, the uh, the, the, the certain ruler or whatever said, I need you to come uh, raise my daughter up from the dead. Come into this place and they were having a festival because she had already di died. And he said to them, give place for the maid for she is not dead. She's only asleep. They laughed and scorned at Jesus in unbelief. And when the people were put forth, he went in. He said, y'all going to have to get out of here. He told every one of them, y'all need to get out of here so that uh, so that I can do what I need to do. He put all the unbelief out. He put the doubt out. And that's what we need to do. We need to put the doubt out. Get the doubt out. When these people were put out, he took her by the hand and she rose up. And the fame here of went and spread abroad into the land. Oh, goodness, put the doubt out. That's why Mark 11 says, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. You got to get the doubt out. Get the doubt out of that heart. Get it out. <clears throat> My goodness, have mercy. 50 minutes later, we're halfway through the first page. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Tell you what, I'm going to read Matthew 13, 58. Get the doubt out. Get the unbelief out. Matthew 13, 57, and it says that all of these people in his hometown, Jesus had come to his home country. I tell you what, I'm starting verse 53. And it came to pass, came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed. And when he had come to his own home country, he taught them in their synagogues in so much as that they were astonished and said, who is this man with this kind of wisdom that does these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son, the, his mother's Mary and his brother James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are not all these, is this not who this man is? And then they were offended. We got to get offense out. Offense is a block. It is a roadblock for us to receive any kind of thing from God that he has to offer. It completely shuts off the kingdom flow. And when we get offended, and they were offended and said, and Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. And he did no mighty works here because of their unbelief. He did no mighty works there because of their unbelief. Not because he, he couldn't perform, but because their unbelief did not create their their unbelief couldn't create an impartation to receive. Faith creates an impartation to receive of the kingdom of God. Get the doubt out. I'm telling you, we ain't got, we ain't got time for it. <clears throat> if you'll receive a prophet, you'll receive his reward. They didn't receive the prophet, so they couldn't receive what the prophet had to offer. Faith. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I tell you what, I may end this. I may end this here. It is 10 13. I've got to run to, to the store for a few minutes. I, I'll need to run up there and do a order. I gotta order some some plants and stuff. Uh trying to think. 10 13. I sh I can probably come back live today. Y'all be sure as we end this live, go over here to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, anything that we can do, because we're going to get to a point to where we can uh, set our camera up and go live, hopefully on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. And if uh, we, we just don't want anybody to miss any kind of live stream. If we go, we got to get back going on Facebook and YouTube some more. So if if you're not on, on a following us or anything be sure to anybody on tiktok come over to uh, youtube good lord i got a link in my bio click on my name i got that direct me link you can go follow us on uh youtube anything like that my brother dave apparently y'all give him a follow i have enjoyed this i have been live for about three hours or about, yeah, about three hours so I'm going to get in the word a little bit this evening some more. So I'm going to try to go live today. I'm not saying I will. So I'm going to go ahead and end this YouTube and I'm going to end this. But hey, before we do that, let's give anybody a chance to give their life to Jesus. We don't want to give anybody. A, uh, we don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Jesus said if you would come to him, he would in no wise cast you out. Remember John chapter six we just read? In 1 John 1 and 9, it says, If you'll confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If he's cleansed you from all unrighteousness, that means that you have no unrighteousness at all in you. You are a completely brand new person. Romans chapter 10 even says, If you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved whosoever. So let's do this right now. If you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, you feel like you have backslid, or if you want to give your life solely over to Jesus, you've never made that decision. Today is the day right now. I want you to repeat after me. I can't say it for you. I'm going to help you. I can't, I can say it with you, but I can't believe it for you. Let's believe it right here. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins to you. I believe that you died and rose again and paid the price for my sins so that I wouldn't have to. So by faith, I confess you, Jesus, as Lord of my life, and I say I, that I am living my life for you right now, holy and blameless for the rest of my days in the name of Jesus. Hey, if you just said that and you meant it in your heart, you are born again, you're off the road to hell and on your way to heaven right now. And you've got access right now to everything that heaven has to offer because you are a citizen of the kingdom of God right now. If y'all said that, let us know in the comment section. Say, I said it. I rededicate my life. Anything that you can do to let us know because all of heaven rejoices. I said it. Amen. I said it. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name. I'm telling you. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Father. Amen, Matthew. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you all so much. I've enjoyed this.
Y'all be sure to go hit that subscribe button on YouTube so, or Facebook, either one, so you won't miss any kind of live streams, any kind of Bible studies. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Let's get water baptized. Let's get in a Bible-based church. Let's get in the Word. And let's put that Word in our heart and put it in our mouth. And let's live it. Let's walk in it. Let's speak it. Let's live a victorious life that He was paid for, that He paid for us to live in. Yes, we're good now. I, I do live stream uh, some Sunday mornings, like 7.30, 8.30 in the morning. I, I, I know I will this Sunday morning at 7.30 Central Time. I'll have about 45 minutes that I can go live. And then I'm actually going to, a, to preach at a church about 45 minutes away from here. But there's no phone service there, so I'll have to record it. <clears throat> but I will upload it to YouTube. Uh, I'll upload it to YouTube probably Sunday night or something like that. Mad Dog, hit me up. We'll do whatever we need to do. Get a Zoom call. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, I'm going to check off of here. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ be with y'all. We are in central Mississippi.